having set up some of the key issues, uh, Nanji now asks what the key issues are that will help us really move beyond this notion of a clash of civilizations. And he notes that in recent history, and this is about the last uh, 200 to 250 years, this idea of a nation state has really acquired a level of permanence. And so let me even write that down. There's been a notion of permanence, permanence associated with associated with the nation state. Okay, and I think this is an interesting notion. And really the question is, you know, how do we transcend this notion? How do we go far beyond it? Okay? And on the one hand, I think it's hard to imagine a world in which political arrangements really fail to include the idea of nation states. And on the other hand, as, as Nanji writes, quote, the forces that dominate our political life today are at cross purposes with that idea, unquote. And so Nanji really believes fundamentally that we need to think beyond, beyond the nation state. Okay. Now, in, in many ways, it's, it's not just about thinking beyond the nation state, but really also in many ways about thinking beyond national boundaries or geographic boundaries, if you will. All right, and he cites actually two particular examples that I, that I think are particularly relevant in terms of um, why we need to move beyond, or, or places where we've actually moved beyond uh, this, this notion of a national boundary. And one of the first examples is the North American Free Trade Agreement, aka NAFTA, if you've uh, not heard of it. And really what NAFTA does is it defines uh, a broader boundary in many ways. It comprises Canada, Mexico, and the United States. And, and really NAFTA promotes not just the exchange of goods, but also the, the increase in interactions among people. And, and really people can move now across borders more easily, they can share ideas more easily, they can improve uh, cultural and educational relations as a result. And the other example that uh, Nanji cites, which is in a similar vein, and probably one that's, that's maybe more applicable to this particular setting, is, is the World Wide Web. In general, the idea that we have these much more expansive communications networks that, that transcend geographic boundaries, that allow us to transmit uh, you know, not just data, but really fundamentally ideas, goods, and really values, is a very powerful one. Now, despite this need to think in terms of large geographic boundaries, there is also uh, some degree of resistance. And, and as Nanji writes, quote, because regions still matter, regionalism is still strong, regional interests are strong, and there is no truly representative sense of what these interests should be shared across the nation. It is a trend that is evident and needs to be because it says something about the way people perceive larger boundaries as threatening local identity, unquote. Ananji then wonders whether we will have to rethink this idea of a nation state, or are we going to have to rethink it in any way, and in particular, whether we're going to be able to really you know, move past the idea of a nation state. And, and when he talks about moving past it, he says, can, can we move past it um, to something that just goes beyond, you know, that goes beyond just geographic locale. Okay, and this is, a, again, a key, uh, a key notion here. He really wants to move past thinking about geographic locations because, you know, in many ways, um, you know, we do continue to identify ourselves in, in terms of geographic location. Will, will future Muslims be able, you know, let's say if you have a future Muslim who was born in Canada, raised in Canada, is he going to think of himself as a Canadian Muslim rather than just as an Arab or as a Pakistani or as an East African? And as Nanji writes, quote, it is likely that we will see a dramatic revision in the way in which our own sense of national belonging in geographical location is going to be disrupted by these larger boundaries. That will change the way we think of ourselves as belonging to any one particular civilization. The next generations of Muslims born and brought up in Canada may not think of themselves as being only Arab or Malay or Turkish, Indian, Pakistani or East African, but will think of themselves also as Canadian Muslims. It is possible that the distance from the national ethic and the national ethnic and geographical location will also reduce the relationship with it. This enlargement of the sense of self is critical to the process of development of the larger human family of which we are all a part. Quote, how does this translate into a fabric of cultural life in a country? The evolution is difficult to predict, but we should keep our minds open. Nobody believed even 15 years ago that the Soviet Union would collapse and that newer patterns would emerge to change the equation of relationships in Central Asia. 
the consequences of that for people in Central Asia and for others will continue to be of significance, unquote. So really, Nanji now considers a question of how we can anchor our civilizational identity, whether it should be anchored in geography, inherited language, or culture, or so on and so forth. And what he really suggests is that we should be considering you know, going beyond uh, geographic boundaries and into what he terms uh, fundamental values, fundamental values okay, associated with the human experience, fundamental values associated with the human experience. And really, he writes, in, in, in closing this section of the paper, he writes, quote, When Taliban destroyed the statues of the Buddha recently, what was hurtful was not that some stone images had been reduced to rubble or that they were getting political knowledge out of it. What was more hurtful was that a human ideal, which had been valued in that part of the world for so long, was destroyed. Muslims have been encouraged to maintain strong interfaith relationships, they are asked to protect other people's culture and heritage, not to destroy it. The same can be said of many others throughout history, including those here in North America who have destroyed other people's heritage and traditions. But these are not lessons of a clash of civilizations. They are lessons about the elimination of human wisdom and knowledge. That is what we cannot afford to do. If we want to reach beyond the clash of civilizations, it is not simply about politics about global clusters and boundaries. It is about ourselves, and it is about the moral horizons which we set for ourselves throughout history and for today. In the process, it would be wrong to limit ourselves to any single and closed definition of Muslims. We need to accept the reality of pluralism in Islam, as in other civilizations, and to reorganize plurality as a condition of all societies. And I think here the key the key phrase that he mentions is this idea that we have to think beyond any single and closed definition of really any large scale group. And, and you know, when you think about it, there are something like 1.7, 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. Um, you know, thinking of them as in any kind of homogenous sense would be a mistake, and, and that could lead to all sorts of, of fallacies down the line in terms of how you approach foreign policy and other issues. So with that, I'm going to end this video, and I'll do. Uh, likely one more video on this paper of Azim Nanji.